Happy, happy holidays or whatever. Yeah, I like your Christmas sweater. What do you? Uh, I, I, it's a Shiner beer. Shiner beer made a Christmas sweater. And so whenever my wife and I went down there, I bought one. I was like, yes, I need that. I got the Christmas sweater from the night before with Seth Rogen with the uh, the giant uh, star of David on it. And everyone's like, nice. are you Jewish? And I'm like, I could be. <laughs> You're like, happy Hanukkah. People, people, people start assuming it's a race. I'm like, it's a religion. You can be it whenever you want to be. It's like being Mormon. You can just decide to go off into the middle of the woods and build a shack. Don't they call that uh, Christmas tree Jewish or what do they call it? What's the, the Christmas term for tree it? Jewish? <laughs> you mean the, remember the ladles? No, they have a saying for it that's like, I thought you were Christmas tree Jewish, which which was like, you're Jewish, but you celebrate fucking Christmas and everything else. Oh, did you already put up your tree? And when did you have your tree put up? So we put up our tree like a day or two after Thanksgiving. That's what everybody does. Why does everyone put it up that early? You shouldn't have it till the week before. Bro, if it were me, I'd have it up all year round. But dude, I'm Christmas all year round. Plus, I leave it up till middle of January because in Iceland, in the Nordic countries, they celebrate Christmas to January 16th. I'm going to do the same. Does it make you seem like fancy? Like, have you ever walk into someone's house and they have like a nice ficus in their thing? You're like, oh, you really water that. Is that is that your plant that impresses people as a Christmas tree? It's like you got a fucking full on fern in your in your foyer. In your foyer, you have a fern. Yes. Oh, dude. If I could have one year round, I would have a Christmas tree year round. I'm okay with it. I think I prefer the plastic ones over the real ones it seems like the real ones are a little bit more of a hassle at least when I was a kid it was so difficult you get sap on your hands next thing you know your hands are stuck together but the plastic ones are easy but there's just not that smell of pine in the air unless you light one of those scented candles yeah uh, have you tried the new Febreze pine I no? actually I spray oh. it but it, it's too much it'll knock you out I almost called it a flavor but <laughs> it's like the Febreze flavor <laughs> Yeah, no, dude, it's good. I like I like the pine one. I went to my car and I'm like, Christmas bitches, let me spray this everywhere. <laughs> That's literally whatever I have in my car. I have a Febreze one. It's supposed to be bonfire, which is like the crackling of what a campfire smells like. It actually yeah. smells pretty good for a campfire because I like the smell of a campfire. Like after you go camping, it smells amazing. Yeah. But then when you get in your car, you ride home and the next day you take a shower, you get back in your car and it smells like campfire. You're like, fuck, dude, this is yeah. too much. <laughs> and then you wash it and it's just not the same after you wash it you're like it smells like a funky fire now what would you consider i guess the tree what would be a proper tree in your mind would it be real or would it be fake i mean if you're going proper it's got to be real okay you know if if oh, sorry authentic would be real i mean but whatever work whatever works for you i mean my sister has a one of those artificial ones and the branches like snap and fold to where it it turns into like just a perfect pole and sits in their garage. So then whenever they pull it out with all the maneuvering they do, it turns into a huge ass tree. I'm okay cool. with the artificial stuff, but it has to be green artificial. It can't be like the Christmas tree can't be white. It can't be no. like red. It can't be some funky colors or something like that. Like, no, you know, you have to put the decorations on. Cause that's like the fun part is putting on the decorations. Yeah, the the reason I like real trees though is because we we have a couple friends too that they always get two or three trees for the holiday because they have a big house, and we take their trees camping with us in January, and that's what we use for firewood. Have you ever lit a Christmas tree on fire? I it mean, lights hold on. Up. You said taking your Christmas tree camping. I think you're buckling up in the passenger seat, but no, you mean like a dead Christmas tree in the back of the, yeah. the truck? Or something. Yeah, like you you cut it up and you use that wood instead of like going to buy wood. You just use people's Christmas trees. So I actually have an experience with that. I go camping a lot when I was a kid. And when I was a little kid, I put my jacket on the back of one of those, like, you know, you have like a beach chair sitting by the fire or something like that. Um, my nice puffy Ravens jacket. It was like a hundred dollar jacket I got for Christmas. And it's a little bit after Christmas. My dad's friend, I, he's, we call him Big E because he's a big guy like an ox. He grabs a whole thing of gasoline, dumps it all over the fire, and then grabs a dead Christmas tree and throws it on top of it and then lights it. And when he lit it, my jacket was way too close to it, and it was just sitting on the chair. I backed up, and I was staying from a distance. My whole puffer jacket just, I mean, was glazed, like ice, like crystallized, basically, from the amount of heat that hit it. Oh, my God. Dude, those trees light up so <laughs> – light up. That was a pun yeah. for you. <laughs> but – Dude, they they ignite 
so quick and it's loud and just huge fireball whenever you light those. So I put that under like if we still we do buy wood or something. I'll put the Christmas tree under it and just light the Christmas tree. That whole thing goes up quick. What would you consider your tradition to be though? Like, do you have a tradition that a lot of people don't do? Like every year, me and my dad would name our Christmas tree after a reindeer. I have never heard of that. That's actually a good one though. No, we don't really have a tradition for it. This is the first year I've had a, I've had a tree since I was six. Yeah. Six. This is the first year I've had a tree in a long time. Do you do anything special for the Christmas traditions though? Like for like my new, my Christmas Eve is steak and shrimp. And then usually watching a Christmas story until like the next day and baking cookies too. Oh yeah. Baking. Co- but that's a year round thing, dude. Baking cookies. I'm all, I'm always down for that. Depends on um, how you like your cookie though. Um, snickerdoodles year round. I'm sitting here staring at a box of uh, peanut butter cookies that look amazing. There's are so I like there's people that like a soft gooey cookie and then there's people mm-hmm. that want to burn a shit. I'm the type where I'm like burn the living shit out of it to where it's black unless it's oatmeal raisin and then I go ham on some oatmeal raisin cookies. I don't do oatmeal raisin, dude. I, it's all my dad ate growing up. So now I'm like no oatmeal raisin. I it's want like- snickerdoodle peanut butter. You know the shitty Christmas cookies you buy at the grocery store that taste like cardboard, but they look like a Christmas tree? So once the the Salvation Army and the people give you for donating? Yeah, yeah. I want those. Okay, so I'm going to have to send you these snacks when I get them. But we, this is like drugs in our household, okay? So on Christmas time, my grandma makes her special Christmas snack. What she does is she takes pretzel, pretzel rods, the giant pretzels, mm-hmm. the long ones look like cigars you smoke out of them and stuff. Yeah. Oh. She takes those, she grabs a whole, like, uh, what is it, tinfoil, like, tray, like, kind of lays it out, mm-hmm. and she covers it with caramel, peanut butter, Hershey's chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, M&M's, then she rolls the pretzel rods in them, so they're, like, little, like, popsicle sticks you, like, buy, and then you freeze them, and they're, like, drugs in our household. She puts pecans mm-hmm. on them and everything like that, but everyone gets a small bag for Christmas because she does a small amount of them. I remember my cousin came over on Christmas Day. He's eating pretzel rods. I'm like, what are, where, where'd you get those? And he goes, Grandma gave them to me. I'm like, where did you get those, though? And he's like, oh, um, pull them out of the freezer because you have them in the freezer. And I was like, those are mine. You get your own damn stash and eat those, man. Like, Shit. It's like coming to another person's house and shitting in their toilet then walking out. I mean, I've done that too, but <laughs> hey guys, we're close to your house. I just got to use your bathroom real quick. <laughs> That's not a bad thing though. It's this season. Open up your doors, give me some eggnog and let me take a dumper in your toilet. Dude, I, I drank probably quarter of a carton this morning of eggnog. I still can't believe you like eggnog. Oh bro. Tis the season. Well, oh I, yeah. I know you're like a spice mixologist, but at the same time, how are you drinking your eggnog? Because if you go to like Walmart, you ever try scrolling through the aisles when they have eggnog in? There's different flavors. One's like non-alcoholic that you can mix with Fireball. And I'm like, this doesn't seem like, I mean, is this why adults love the holidays? Because you can just get hammered. That, so that's what I found out like with over the last couple of years. That's why adults were always like, yay, the holidays is because they can get shit faced. And as a kid, you're like, it's just a joyous time of year. No, no, no. So you can get shit faced. So I drink my eggnog non-alcoholic. I just like eggnog. What's in it? I don't even know. Exactly. Dude. <laughs> you don't know. It's like mayo. People <laughs> like it, but you don't know what exactly that is. No one can I mean, describe the consistency. I read the label as far as like calories and fat and shit, and it is horrible for you. It's like one cup of eggnog is like, to 300 calories for just so, a cup i can't really criticize you even though we could talk nutrition i would i would love to because let me tell you what i've been on i've been freezing animal crackers and i've been eating those mm-hmm. i don't know if i mentioned that to you but i got a cycle bike for christmas so let's say about two days ago i cycled from 6 p.m until 4 a.m and then i went into work So I burned a total of, I think, 3,672 calories in that whole ride. But um, before I go into work, guess what I tore open and ate a whole industrial family size bag of? Animal crackers. You know how much proteins in animal crackers? Zero. Zero. You know how many sugars in animal crackers? 
43 grams, let me guess. It's about eight grams per cracker. And there's about Jesus. 12 crackers per serving. And there's about 24 servings in the bag I ate. And each serving, I think, adds up to, I think, uh, I think it's like 800 something calories for 14 animal crackers. Jesus. I consumed like 4,000 an- or calories of animals crackers. I'm at work and my stomach started cramping. I'm like, the animals are fighting the zoo. I can't <laughs> control it. I'm like calling Kevin Smith or Kevin James to after the movie zookeeper. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And after you did all that work, you're eating that. It's got nothing in it. That's good for you. I've been right. there. I could have overconsumed on protein and it actually would have been beneficial. Maybe my legs would have went up like a tree size or, you know, like, when you, you know, you cut off a, tr- uh, you cut a tree, you tell the age of it by its rings. You could do that with my thighs, but then no, I just ate animal crackers. It turned into nothing in my body that was useful. And it really hurt my stomach all day. Oh, Jesus, man. That's a long ass bike ride though. I've been trying to do more cycling uh, because I want to do it's bucket list item uh do a triathlon in may and i don't i don't bike though so i've been trying to get some miles in and i'm like holy shit this ain't easy do you have a cycle bike at home no i go to the gym and use like their the spin class bikes and i'm gonna buy a bike probably january february so like an I, actual road bike i would go to the gym like the past couple of months since we've last podcasted and i would be like doing two a days where i would work out and then i would come back in and do like the rest of my abs or something and then also cycle for like a couple of hours and just you know schedule stuff for podcasting it's so easy to have something to do but when you have a cycle bike in your room i watched deadpool one and two i watched both of those movies playing music on my phone i have to get new bluetooth headphones mine broke this morning i was pissed i was at the gym lifting with no music i was like this is how the vikings lifted like fucking no, nothing no joe rogan podcast playing to, to lull me through. My no sets. wonder they were angry right, right. <laughs> they had nothing going on just lifting but it, it's a whole different experience when you are able to cycle and also be able to play video games, like play Call of Duty or something. It's just, it changes up the game. It makes it go by so quick. So really that 6 p.m. till 4 a.m. was nothing because it just flew by so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I need I need to cycle more though. It is so good for you. And then like my cardio game was, it wasn't shit, but it was not the greatest <laughs> after the last few months. It's it's really weird because like I had to get a comfy seat for mine because the other seats are so thin. It just feels like it's just compressing your balls. I'm like, I need to find something that's like more comfy when I ride. So I was riding this and I was playing UFC because game Pass has put that up there for free. Yeah. So I'm fighting and every round I win, I would hop off the bike to walk around and be like, yeah, like get hype in it. (laughs) Well, guess what? My legs were asleep. So every time I kept doing that, it was like trying to like walk for the first time. I'm like, fuck. And I'm trying to be excited that I just knocked out somebody. And then you're knocking yourself out trying to walk. (laughs) And then I recently started diving into, like I said, I'm not an alcohol guy, but screwball. Bro. Yeah, the peanut butter whiskey. Did I send you the picture? I called them out on Twitter saying you guys have an amazing screwball thing, and they yeah. messaged back and liked my tweet. And I'm like, sponsor me because I just mix it with A and W root beer, dude. That's a combination Ooh. and a half. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh man, I love me some root beer, dude. Uh, do you guys have Virgil's there? Virgil's root beer. Virgil's, yeah. Dude, that's my shit. Love it. A little expensive for. A soda. No, screwball is expensive. The only bottles they sell at my liquor store are thirty-four dollars. I'm like, that's a fucking lot. And half the bottles like glass. Wow. So like it's looks like there's more in it than you're actually getting. It's like false. It's like lying to me. And I'm like, yeah, you're making it seem like I just drank a whole whiskey bottle when really it was like a half an actual one. Or you could just be like me and drink whole whiskey bottles all day. Don't do it. That's the bad experience I had with eggnog was I, when I drank it when I was a kid, it had a lot of booze in it and it really trashed me. Oh, I see. I've had alcoholic eggnog once. I think I was like 16, 17 after that straight eggnog, no, no liquor in it. I didn't even like it whenever it had alcohol in it, it changed the flavor too much. Have you tried maybe, are you drinking it straight out of the carton? You know, I'm not supposed to, my wife would yell at me, but yes, I'm. Drinking it straight out of the garden. <laughs> have you tried to mix it up with something? I haven't yet. No, should... I mean, I have a whole unopened one in there because I just killed the one I bought a couple days ago. So uh, next time, whenever I open this other bottle or carton, I'll, uh, I'll mix some stuff with it. You should try some spices like cumin or try Old Bay into it. 
Ooh, Old Bay, yeah. I'll do some Old Bay in it for sure. I feel like that thing is good on anything, and I'm not just saying that because I'm from Maryland. <laughs> See, I tried to put a hot sauce with it once. Does not work. You are no longer feeling the holiday cheer. You're feeling the uh, toilet terror. Would that work with a chocolate sauce, though? Maybe. So I still have the chocolate, uh, what is it, chocolate plague. I should probably try it with that. But I just, I'm so scared of ruining eggnog for myself because it's like the, my go to during Christmas times. It makes me happy. And there's few things that do that. <laughs> Literally, any, to get a Christmas gift for you would just be buying one of those variety packs of hot sauces they sell at like Walmart, where it's like, this is a great yep. gift for someone that you know that you don't really know what they want and you don't want to get them a gift card. You want them to have something to open. Hot sauce, done. <laughs> <laughs> man since the last time we we did the podcast i killed probably 20 bottles like went overboard on sauce for a little bit and now i'm like taking a break just because my insides were so jacked i had to take a break for a while i think it's the past couple of months i've been doing it what recently i've been doing is with my protein shakes i sent you a picture that was old bay and uh cayenne pepper tossed into there with orange Perfect. soda like diet orange soda and white uh, vanilla protein powder. It made like a, a frothy cream soda, but with the Old Bay and cayenne added like a heat kick to it. It might sound disgusting, dude, but dude, it feels freaking fascinating. Like you discovered a new liquid, like the flavor of the gods or something. Yeah, no, I like that. There's a protein shop next to Gold's on the south side of town and they do protein shakes. It's, it's offset from the gym, so it's not in the gym. And they have this one that's it's protein powder, but they do orange. What do they do? They do orange and then cream soda and something else in it that makes it taste. Do you remember? Oh, uh, what is it? It's attached to. Oh, fuck. No, I'm not even going to remember what it is. Orange Julius. You guys do Orange Julius? I've heard of that drink. I don't know what it is, though. It tastes well, it tastes just like that. And I, that's what I grew up. My mom would always get us was she's like, if you're good, you'll get an Orange Julius. They are so good. And that protein drink that they made tasted just like it. So I would order like the fucking big gulp size of it. Way more protein than you, than you need, right? You're just going to go straight shit it out. That's the but same dude. thing. Well, that's the same thing at my gym. We have to make protein shakes for people. And the most common one to get is a peanut butter slammer. So a peanut butter slammer, you fucking hate peanut butter by the time you make all these drinks because your hands somehow like I, I, put, I literally put on the glove and I put it on. And I scoop the peanut butter out. But then every time I take the glove off my hands, reek of peanut butter, I end up sleeping with my hand on my face and I smell peanut butter all the time. Well, now they make new drink combinations and now we're doing Christmas stuff. So we had a mocha one where it uses Hershey cocoa powder. That okay. shit gets everywhere. The whole damn counter is stained. There's cinnamon and cinnamon makes me sick after a fireball experience I had a few years back. <laughs> so I'm like, and just overall in hell, like where I'm literally telling the people and trying to convince them not to buy a protein shake where I'm like, instead of me making you one, wouldn't you want one just like a ready to go one out of the fridge or something? And they're like, no, I want one especially made. And I'm like, I want right. you to make it. <laughs> okay. I didn't wash my hands. So I'm all right with doing that then. <laughs> Yeah, that powder gets everywhere. It's kind of like cornstarch does the same thing because of how, how fine it's grated. That shit gets everywhere, dude. Like, I'll find it in rooms I didn't even cook in. Well, I think the best way to have these drinks in stock is to have it in season before it's the season. Because by the time the season rolls around, you just hate it so much. Yeah. Yep. Like, and then peppermints, peppermint candies, those things. Like, I don't know anybody that really enjoyed that. Um, sometimes. What do you mean sometimes? If it's any time but Christmas, I'll go ham on them. You're telling me you get a stocking and there's candy canes in there and you're going to eat those things? Oh, candy canes all fucking day, dude. What? All day. That's like a stocking stuffer where I see that and I just leave it in there. I grab everything else out of it. Oh, God. No, dude. Candy canes? Yeah. Uh, I did. There's a Christmas bar here called uh, Miracle on 5th because it's on 5th Street. And they do all these holiday drinks. It's a pop-up bar. So they're only open for like four weeks during the year. And they do some candy cane drinks that are delicious. And then they put those little mini ones like off the side of the martini glass. So like they dress it real nice. Dude. Yeah. 
man, I don't know. All about I, that. If I trust that, I think my favorite thing on Christmas, like if you had to pick it, something that you get on Christmas or something you do on Christmas, what would be your favorite aspect of it? Like what would be the thing that you're always excited to get? Like for me, it's the cards. I love really opening oh, up yeah. a Christmas card and then having someone write something inside of there for it. I know it sounds corny, but it's just like, I don't know. It just, it's, it's a little something where it's like, you like to hear the, the, the conversation through sometimes writing. I like the, how the, how the gifts are wrapped, even not, not even my gifts, just, you know, seeing a gift that's perfectly wrapped. I like wrap presents, dude. That, that's my shit. Love it. Nothing, and then I try to wrap one and I'm like, holy shit, I cannot wrap. <laughs> nothing was, I guess there's a different experience when you become an adult. I mean, even like I'm only in my, you know, I'm 22 or something, but when I was a kid, it was always like you were trying to figure out like to see what you would get. And then after you like sneak downstairs, like this whole master plan of like everybody's asleep, you go see the presents by the tree, you open them up and stuff and you open up, you see what it is and you cover it back up. And then in your head, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I just ruined my surprise. Like, now you know what you're going to get. Now you have to fake it the next day. That's the worst. You're like, oh. And then you're like, I already knew. <laughs> I knew when my grandma, she used to do these care packages things. Um, she would fill it up with like toilet paper, deodorant, all these like, these, just a giant box with all the essentials you kind of need as like a, just an adult male, I would say. Yeah. And um, so I was so excited for it. And I was like, finally, I'm above the age now. I'm over 18 and this is where we start getting care packages instead of toys. And I'm like, all right, so I'm so ready to get it. She shows up to my house and she goes, I'm not doing care packages this year. I'm like, what do you mean? No, I'm not getting a care package for Christmas. And she goes, all right, let me throw something together. She ended up getting me one. It was really, really nice. Had a lot of those pretzel things in there, which was always the one thing we wanted. But it was like, you start to notice your things change. And it made me start to realize if I have kids what I tell them about Santa Claus, would I give some fat guy in a suit all the credit for all the gifts I worked my ass off for? It made me look at like <laughs> me being a kid opening up a rock band drum set for Christmas when I was like 10 or something and be like, Santa got me this. And then my dad just being like, yeah, Santa fucking got you that. Not me DJing gigs all fucking night and trying to make as much money as possible to make sure you have a Christmas. Yeah. Or tell your kids you are Santa Claus. And don't tell the other kids. <laughs> but then you're going to have a bunch of kids that are going to be coming up to you like, Santa Claus, what I want for Christmas. You're like, oh, my son told everybody at his school that I'm Santa Claus. Well, then you tell him, well, tell your mom to do more OnlyFans content and buy it for you. <laughs> ho, 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 my friend. Ho, yes. ho, ho. Dude, did, did you see those memes that was like, you know, whenever your kid's like 10 now, if they were born now, somebody on a like Call of Duty game room is going to be like, yeah, I saw your mom on OnlyFans. And you're like, damn, damn. <laughs> yeah. That's, as much as technology advances, it also makes it worse for bullying, I would say. Man, I couldn't imagine, dude, being like, they pull up their phone. They're like, hey, is this your mom? You're like, ew. <laughs> I, had to, I had to like come to like a thorough like conclusion in my head of I don't think I'm ever going to take my kid to go see Santa at the mall. I'm like, I don't want a stranger and my little kid sitting on his lap. That's a little weird. It is a little weird. That was a big trend back in the day of like you had to do that. Every, oh, yeah. You used to have to get up, take a shower, comb your hair real nice, get the brush and everything, and then take a picture. And you get like – I have snow globes all in my house of me and my brother sitting on Santa's lap. And I'm like, that's a fucking strange guy that no one knew. Like if I knew the person that was Santa, like I was friends with him, that would work. But a random stranger in a mall, you don't know if that's what get that guy's jollies off. So you're telling me you sat on a lot of dudes' laps, huh? I sat on the same guy's <laughs> lap every year. That's commitment. That That's basically marriage, bro. You just sat on the same lap for years. Look at you go. <laughs> so I'm, you're saying I'm faithful. I'm saying you're faithful. Here you go. Don't you dare act like it's just me. The whole world <laughs> was doing this trend and is still doing it. <laughs> no, I'm acting like it's just you. You're just so faithful. Look, let me tell you something. There was a weird uh, newspaper article I saw that was on like MSN or something on, when I turned on my Explorer on the internet. I sounded old as shit when I said that. Explorer on the internet. On the uh, on the line. On the line. <laughs> on We're the doing line. lines, my friend. Doing them. Ho, ho, ho. But there was a bunch oh, yeah. of people waiting for Santa Claus and they were all wearing masks. I'm like, how awkward is this for kids? Like, imagine you have to take a photo for school and like instead of getting the awkward, weird photos that get sent home or your mom's like, I definitely don't want to buy this one you are getting a mask photo where it's like 
This is my senior year. Was Santa wearing a mask or or at the malls? If they're even doing that, like our malls. Santa's not wearing a mask, but all the kids are, which doesn't make sense to me. Makes no sense. Wow. So you're going through these photos with your kids, say 20 years later, right? And you're like, oh, this year, this year. And then you see the one of the mask. You're like, oh, that was 2020 for sure. It's like when Come you see the, the commercials and all the stuff going on with the mask now, like people in commercials wearing a mask two, three years ago or two, three years from now, it, when there's a vaccine and all this is long behind us, people are going to be looking at it like, what the fuck happened? Why in the year 2020 were people wearing masks in their commercial? Is this a prank like SNL? Like people 40 years from now are going to be looking at that. Oh, imagine the history books whenever this goes through, like the 2020 pandemic will be in the history books. And you're just like, dang, mom and dad, I didn't know you lived through that. What the, you know, kind of like how we look at the at the Spanish influenza now, because we don't know anyone that really lived through it. So now it's going to be like, oh, shit, 2020, you guys lived through that. And it wasn't that bad because we have computers. We have, you know, say gaming or anything like we made it through it pretty, pretty OK. Do you think Christmas is going to last another 50 years from now? I, I want to say no, but it, it will because of indoctrination of, of festivities. You know, it's been going on for so long. I think that the tradition will still be alive, but it'll be different than how we celebrate it now because it's already different than how I celebrated it as a kid. So I think it'll be around. It will just kind of change into something else, like how they celebrate it. It's one of the only, I guess, festival things that is the hardest to take down, like almost impossible. Like at long, long, about 1945 or whatever, when we were in World War with uh, Germany, yeah. Hitler took the whole idea of Santa Claus out of Christmas, but he couldn't took Christ out of Christmas. For a good two-year period, there were every Christmas, it was like, it was all instead of making gingerbread people, it was making toy soldiers, it was making airplanes, it was making a lot of stuff like crosses, swastikas, all these things. He literally there's Christmas cards you can look up where it's Adolf Hitler smiling with a little girl at a table that says like Merry Christmas in German. And it's them making like bomber cookies and stuff. Jesus. <laughs> he was like, we're taking Santa Claus out. And then, they, then he wanted to take Christ out of it. And then everyone's like, uh-uh, that's too far. We'll, That's we'll, too far. We won't praise a fat guy that breaks into our house and eats our cookies and leaves our kids presents, but we're, we'll take that guy out, but we're not taking out Jesus. <laughs> Gee, that's insane, man. Yeah. Just the thought of Santa Claus, how it is though, where you're like, yeah, we're just going to let this fat dude come down our chimney, put some stuff here under the tree, eat some food. And, and he's just, just going to leave. He's just going to leave. It's fine. And even though you see all the other like older lore behind it, and it's like a lot darker than what it actually is now. And it's like, how oh, did yeah. they just turn it into this? Like somebody PC'd it somehow. Yeah, he's happy. He's a happy guy. Don't worry about it. And you're like, no, he's not. <laughs> I'm like, I bet you $20 that by the end of the night, Santa is hammered. And that's why he has reindeer that think for themselves. And they're able to fly like autopilot, like a Tesla. Yep. He's just sitting in the in the sleigh like. Take me home, boys. <laughs> Just tossing presents out of the sleigh, landing in like people's Whee! windows and shit. <laughs> Throwing it, doing those three pointers through the uh, through the chimney. Yeah, it's Santa Claus. <laughs> I got a bike, and a bike just flies right through your window and kills. Him. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Well, don't let Santa drink too much." <laughs> I Santa feels a little buzz. <laughs> do you ever try like? maybe starting a tradition or adding a tradition every year. Like me and my buddy, we got our Christmas sweaters one year. And then the next year after that, we always do like with the steak and shrimp is like kind of like a me and my dad thing. But when I became older, I started doing stuff with my buddy. I'm um, going over his house for Christmas day. And it's like the tradition turns into getting Chinese food or something. Cause they're open on Christmas. Yeah. So what me, whenever I want to say about 12 years ago. So when me and my wife got married, we started going to, a movie on the holidays like on thanksgiving and christmas because the movie theaters are open and it's dead so basically you got the theater to yourself and like two three other people that's it so we would go to to the movies on the holidays would you see an actual christmas movie like people say no. lethal weapon is a christmas movie uh lethal weapon are you, are you talking about die hard or lethal weapon I, is it lethal weapon or die hard die hard die hard's a christmas movie yeah well because it's it happens during christmas like every every one of them. Well, no, the first two. They happened during Christmas. Okay, we were in Iraq War during Christmas. Does that make it a Christmas war? 
Yes. Yep. Think it through. Think it through. I had a large bowel movement on Christmas Day. Does that mean it was a Christmas poop? Absolutely. You had that holiday cheer it's called a coming Christmas out your miracle. rear. Christmas miracle, my friend. The holiday cheer coming out your rear. I get it. <laughs> have you ever gotten coal for Christmas? No. I have. I want it. Did you really? Did you I, buy it yourself or did someone give it to you? Someone <laughs> gave it to me when I was a little kid. Like, I guess you've been bad this year. And I'm like, this is from our fireplace. Like uh-huh. you have the fucking thing hanging over the fireplace. You just you just made Reached my whole in. stocking dirty. Oh. Like you, you, you why would you do that? Like, are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> Dude, have you heard the thing where it's like every we stock stock your tree with a bunch of fake gifts, right? Just empty boxes that are wrapped up. And every time your kid starts misbehaving this time of year, throw it in the fireplace and be like, keep going. You're not gonna have any fucking presents. The worst is when you go under the tree and you look and there's only one with your name on it, even though there's hundreds around it. You're like, what the fuck? What? What? I thought these were all mine. He goes, no, that one in the back's yours. The rest are for your brother. And it's like, what did I do? Why does he get more love than me? Why do you love him more? <laughs> well, he's younger. He's, he's only five. We give him a bunch of toys. You're older. So we just gave you a check that you can cash next week. And it's like, I mean, I'll take it. Remember that rent you had to pay? Well, that's your Christmas gift. It's like, damn, being an adult sucks. At least I can get hammered. Yep. Yeah. Man, last uh was it last year? Yeah. I made uh Brandy Alexander's. So we were at a friend friend's house and I made Brandy Alexander's for everyone. So it was like nutmeg, brandy, and you can use whole milk. I think I used eggnog. And yeah, so I guess I have had a alcoholic eggnog because I used eggnog brandy nutmeg and cinnamon and i put it in this little glass I'll, I'll send you the picture later i had a i think i took a picture of it so good dude brandy alexander's on christmas that's a good tradition to do it man it tasted so good they had Wait. those little cocktail glasses too so it made it look real pretty so if Die Hard is a Christmas movie because it takes place on Christmas, then is the story about my – the one I'm going to get on Christmas Eve, the story about my um, mom's friend who's repeated the same story for the past 25 years about coming in contact with a cult um, on uh, – I forgot when it was. It wasn't on Christmas, but the story's told every year at this Christmas party we have. So my aunt throws a Christmas Eve party every single year. And it's a, this big bash where everyone's like, we got to go to your aunt's house. She's throwing a Christmas party. It's this huge thing. Like uh, hundreds of people go. It's like, a, my, is my aunt cool as shit? I guess so. Um, but we would go there and this guy was started recounting the story of how there's this girl that does our local newspaper who writes for it. And they're all like in their 50s right now telling the story. And everyone's like, he's been telling the same story for the past 30 or 20 something years. And let me tell you, nothing ever changes about it. I start to believe it. So I was like, so what's the story? And he goes, the story is I hooked up with this girl who now writes for the Coconut Times, says her name and everything. I'm like, okay, shit, tossing her out there. And he goes, one night, you know, we go back to her place and everything. I had golf the next day. So I was like, I'm going to, you know get this done and go out. You know what I mean? But he was hammered. Girl ties him up to a chair. He's, I mean, close to blackout drunk. He wakes up naked and there's a bunch of people in robes around him, just splattering him with red stuff. I think it was paint. Like, but he was like supposed to be like fake blood or something. Yeah. And they're all wearing hoods. He jumped out of the window, left one of his nice ass loafers. And I know specifically he said his loafer because he kept mentioning how he missed that loafer throughout the rest of the story he's telling. And then he's sitting at a park bench, calls his buddies, they pick him up. And then a few hours later, they go golfing in the morning where he's golfing with one loafer. And he named every single place in my town that I could go to and be like, this is what here he's talking about. This is where he was talking about. This is the building. This is the house and my mom's like he's told the same story for the past 20 something years and it hasn't changed it's been the exact same i'm like bro does that make it a christmas story even though it didn't it happen is a on christmas, christmas story but he told it on christmas it didn't happen at christmas that makes it a christmas story yeah for sure have you, oh my god have you ever had a christmas miracle or something like that happen in your life no Nothing, not, nothing surprising comes... like a long lost family member or something. Oh no. no, I keep I keep those people away. <laughs> so the ninth episode of this podcast is my long lost cousin, 
my grandmom had four kids and one died at the age of like 26 or so of cancer. So no one knew he had a kid. And then now my grand or my uncles are in their fifties. So my cousin's 30 years old. He actually spent the summer with me and lived over here. But on, I found, I met him on Christmas Eve, heard that amazing story, then met my long lost cousin. Then on Christmas day, that ninth episode is fueled after opening up Christmas presents, lots of coffee and eating shrimp. Oh, nice. See, I, I'm still jealous. You get all that seafood over there though, man. That's the that's my tradition. People go for Thanksgiving food. Like everybody's Thanksgiving's turkey, everybody's Christmas foods, turkey, and all this stuff. I'm like, no, mine's shrimp cocktails, mine's crab cakes, mine's anything that comes out of the sea. I'll eat calamari on Christmas. Calamari's good though. Oof. I see, I like the turkey thing though, man. I like the I actually yesterday we just bought more stuffing because they still had it. I'm like, buy more stuffing. It's just amazing. Is that a necessity in your house of stuffing? My wife would say so. <laughs> it's not, it, there's no nutrient value in it. <laughs> there's not, it just tastes amazing, dude. Like, like I like stuffing and Christmas is usually ham or something like that. I think this year we're going to do like a beef Wellington a beef with Wellington. maybe beef Wellington, maybe like a lobster risotto with it or a pom and a, I don't know yet. I'm still drawing up the Christmas menu. Your Christmas in my head, like the wealth line went way up there. Like I'm thinking you're pulling out boiled goose and coming out in like mink coats and shit. Christmas goose, dude. Oh my God. There's a place here, uh, Longhorn Meat Market, and they sell full geese that you can do for Christmas. Like already, you know, head cut off, plucked, whole thing, but they sell goose. So you could do a Christmas. Oh, dude, Christmas goose is so good. I could just point you down here to where all the geese cross my street and everything. And you can just kill I'll come those get things. them. No, that that's a felony in your state. I that is calling for it. That is a big felony. I did not know that. I was like, oh, why don't we just hit these things? They're very aggressive and I don't like them. I really they want someone. Aggressive. It's funny because um, what do you call it? They poisoned a bunch of the geese down here. I think it was like a year ago. It was a big thing. Someone killed over like 30,000 geese in our area. What like, the fuck? Yeah, they poisoned the water that the geese were drinking from in the pond. They just threw some tablets in there and it fucked them all up. It was like, no, they euthanized them. That's what they did. It was a okay. It was an overbreeding thing. And they're like, we need to euthanize a lot of these geese. And the issue was you would think, oh, you're going to donate that geese meat to a shelter or something for food. Absolutely. You can't when you euthanize them. Because of the, yeah, the toxins in the blood that seeps into the meat. So it was a bunch of, you should have just let a bunch of people go out with like forks and knives and shit and just take them out themselves. Slingshots. Go back to the day where you had to kill for your food. Yep. Dude, I've always wanted to do like a wild, <laughs> this sounds horrible now, a wild goose. Like, I want to go stalk it and kill a wild goose and eat it. <laughs> I thought about that with a bear, but I know after watching like the Revenant that like a bear would just kill me so quick. I'd feel bad about killing a deer. Honestly, there's a couple, couple things that I feel bad about. One is, so we have not, I say good fishing. You guys have good fishing. We have Gulf fishing, but we have a lot of sharks down here. So people love to go shark fishing. I feel bad about it after watching that damn Gordon Ramsay documentary on uh, shark fin trade. Oh, so now I'm just like, yeah, and how like they just would cut the the fins off sharks and throw them back in the water, and let them swim around till they die. Like now, I feel bad whenever I catch a shark. It's the same thing with the uh, rhino species. People would cut off their the a rhino's horn because yeah, you can yeah, ground that up and use it into Viagra. Yeah, I would just rather buy Viagra. Yeah, I'm still another thirty years away from needing that. Hopefully, the knock weird... on wood. <laughs> yeah. So all right, so here's one we can call it a Christmas weird thing. Um, so Chinese food, if you're having it on Christmas, you know, they're, di they dye the pork pink. No, isn't that weird? Like, why would you think to why? dye the pork pink? It just looks appetizing. Apparently it looks next to like the rice or beef or something. No, Di dying food is fucking sin, dude. Like, come on. Natural. The way that it looks when you cook, it's how it's supposed to look. Leave it alone. Have you ever heard like, of, um, Joe Coy? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I, so that when Screwball liked my tweet, Joe Coy also liked another one of my tweets. So I was like, it's a double nice. fucking whammy. Um, 
but uh, I was listening to an episode of his where he talked about he has an orange chicken bit about working at a Chinese restaurant. And they're like, no, we need more pot, less pan, because he would keep washing, but they would be like, but the, he talked about the General So's chicken, that sauce, the Szechuan sauce, whatever it is, it caramelizes like candy in a pan. And he goes, mm-hmm. the weirdest thing wasn't even that. It was the fact that they dyed their meat pink because it looked good next to like the beef or something. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that is so like GMOs, like, Oh my God, I can't even think to describe, but we still eat it. Yeah. And you know, oh. that's the thing. If your food, you, there's ways to make your food look good next to whatever you're serving it with. You don't need to dye it. Like, come on. It's kind of like people that have to deep fry everything down here in the South. Food's good without deep frying it. Just learn how to fucking cook. The reason you deep fry it's because you just let that bitch sit in there for 15 minutes and you know it's burn as shit. Like, just learn how to cook. It's like you're fine. drowning your food in sauce. Like once you fry a food, it's really you're just getting the fried the fry part to it. You're not even enjoying the actual food anymore. No, that's why now people are frying everything like Oreos, Twinkies, everything. And they're like, come on, elevate your food game. Don't. The best part yeah. is they use they use the air fryer that you can get off Amazon. Everybody's loving that because they're like, it's healthier. I'm like, it's still fried. It's just cooked in a different method. So I went a little too hard on some friends of mine. Because obviously I like to cook, right? Yeah. And they're just like, oh, you know, hashtag healthy, hashtag, oh, I'm a chef now. Look at all the shit I made in my air fryer. And I was like, no, that means you're a fat, lazy motherfucker who can't cook. That's what it means. Sorry. It's and true, they're like, though. And they're like, well, I'm going to lose so much weight now because I have an air fryer because it's healthy. To I was like, there's no frying. The- it's healthy. Sorry. There's just not. It's not <laughs> as bad for you. Sure. Yeah. But it's still not healthy. You know what's healthy? Boil, boil your chicken, eat some rice and some broccoli. You'll lose a shit ton of weight, I promise you. I did it myself. I just started getting into rice. Remember I told you before I was not a yeah. rice fan? I literally, the past couple of days, I realized how fucking easy it is to make rice. After you failing it. day? Of course. Look, after, Dude, yes. after failing at making mashed potatoes, um, yeah, the, the Insta mash. I failed at turning into clam chowder. I've mentioned it multiple times on here, but I would start making rice. I messed up once with making the 90 second bag rice where you just put it in the microwave. I forgot yeah. to open up the bag and it exploded. Oh, shit. But I learned from that. And now I've been eating rice like crazy. I'm like, a scoop or so of this rice, like just easing into it. I don't trust it 100% because, like, I remember my grandfather, I just really recounted this story the other day. Um, he had eaten too much rice after like open heart surgery, like a few weeks later. He had to watch yeah. how much he consumed, and the rice got stuck in his stomach. And when he drank water, the water didn't go down. So then eventually he had to, he just started like puking. And I'm like, oh my it God. Was a, it was like a, it was like a dam. Yeah. Right. No. See, now you're going to freak me out. I'm going to think about that when I eat rice. I'm be like, hold on. Is this the one that kills me? That's what I'm the only food you can trust is, sadly, I never say you should trust a food that tastes the same stale. But, dude, saltine crackers or frozen saltine animal crackers. crackers. You know what got me into rice before bodybuilding was the growing up. So I think I was nine or ten when the first one came out. Survivor. Because remember, like the first couple seasons, they went through whatever date, what was it, 40 days or whatever, and they only ate like rice that was provided for them. So they had to learn to cook it in, in coconuts and shit like that. That's what originally got me into rice. So I would eat rice like every day doing that. And then obviously getting into fitness and then it's chicken and rice. That's all you fucking eat. I love to hear people's diets. And at the same time, I also like to hear people's like traditions when it comes to stuff. Like I, I always is asking people's Thanksgiving traditions. Someone the other day just mentioned, yeah, on Christmas, you know, we light the candles. We watch a couple of horror movies. And I'm like, look at them like the fuck kind of tradition. That's what my friends do. They yeah, but do horror movies on Christmas. That's what they're like. They're like, they're acting like it's a common thing. I'm like, a lot, a lot of people watch horror movies on Christmas. You're supposed to be happy. Yeah. You're supposed to watch a Christmas story on rewind over and over again. That should be the only thing playing in the house where you would like come in the door after going out grocery shopping for an hour. And it's like fragile. You're like, yeah, fragile. Must be Italian. Yeah, must be Italian. <laughs> Bro, you know what? Uh, I, I think we spoke about this before. You know what's been nonstop playing in my house this month? Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas is You. Dude, she's amazing. Why do people hate her? I don't know. Her and Whitney Houston, bro. Best voices of our generation. That's what I'm saying. But everyone's yep. like, if I hear Mariah Carey again, she's the worst artist. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you smoking? Dude, Mariah Carey's Christmas songs. 
up there. There's a video I'll send you too. It's like this dude, he was a gymnast and he was in like an elf costume, but he can do some crazy shit, you know, around, I hate to say around a pole, but it is, you know, and he's doing like this whole Mariah Carey routine on like bars and poles doing some gymnastic shit. It's pretty fucking good, dude. We used to have and, a Christmas parade roll through our town and they used to play songs like that. But now I don't think we're having that this year, which sucks. It's Cause I was always interested in getting the candy they would toss out like Santa's yeah. t- tossing out candy. Like it's nothing like you get a Snickers, you get a Snickers, you get a Milky way. I'm like, I wanted a Snickers dude. Like, I don't want to be that different trade, person. Trade, trade someone. Do you guys have Trader Joe's? Yeah, we have Trader Joe's. Okay. Have you had the jingle jangle? what the fuck's a jingle jangle see no one knows about it i didn't even know about it till like two years ago and i couldn't get it because i guess people line up for this shit like hours before they release it and it's gone immediately it's a box like a christmas tin full of it's got like the little mini reese's like the little tiny ones um chocolate covered pretzels m&ms chocolate covered nuts some other shit in it but it's a giant fucking tin and it's called uh trader joe's jingle jangle that's like the popcorn tins that everybody gets you, you want to put on weight eat some jingle jangle did you see the, last year oh go ahead i about to say did you see the new uh popcorn tins that came out they're cheetos so it's like cheetos popcorn i'm like whoa like where was this when i was a kid i want that uh, you, oh, look, man. Uh, when it, when you got the popcorn tin, you always went for one of the two, you ne- or one of the three. You never went for like there's always one you just left, or someone else in your house would eat yeah. it. It would always be like the caramel one would be the one you want. Oh yeah, last year we bought that jingle jangle, and it was right before I did seventy five hard, so I couldn't have sweets or anything. So my wife only ate a certain amount, and I was like, I know I'm not off of this program for three months. But I want you to save that jingle jangle because on my first day back to eating, I'm going to eat it. It was so fucking gross and stale, but I ate all of it on the, like the day I got off that program. I ate the whole fucking 10. I think the whole point, like people talk about, like, I got to try and keep my diet or I got to try and keep like clean during the holidays. I'm like, if you go into that mindset of like, I'm not going to have any of this, I'm not going to have any of that, then you're going to overeat and you're really going to throw yourself in a spiral. So I'm like, just know you're going to have some and enjoy that some when you get it. Like, I don't know who brings a fruitcake. I've never had that before. I think that's a weird thing to eat on Christmas. Bro, I love fruitcake. You are a fucking fruitcake. <laughs> I am a fucking fruitcake, too, because you only get it. It's like eggnog. If they sold eggnog year round, I wouldn't give a shit. What's in a fruitcake? Uh, oh, shit. I know this. It's um, pecans, it looks like hazelnut, pecan, hazelnut, pineapple, cherry, mango. No, not mango. Something else. But yeah, it's like a congealed fucking cake that... So it used to be a thing. My mom was telling me this not that long ago in like the nineties and eighties, like you always, no one wanted the fucking fruitcake. So whenever you gave it to someone, it was actually like a fuck you gift. I didn't know that. And she goes, yeah, it was like whenever we got invited to aunt so-and-so's house and I really don't like her. So I'm going to bring her a fucking fruitcake. You're like, so all the people that used to give you fruitcake and you're thinking, Oh my God, thank you so much. And they're like, don't, don't even know that this is like, a supposed to be a fuck you. Yes. I didn't even know that was a thing. And now uh, Costco, going back on Costco, because, you know, I love it. They sell fruitcake and it's like $5.99 for this giant cake. I'm like, what's in it? (laughs) Because if it only costs you five bucks. But then again, I read that article, dude, uh, about the Costco chicken. That that's their money loser because, you know, they make a lot of money off their bulk shit. Yeah. That's their loss item. So they lose, I think, $30 a year off selling those cheap pre-made chickens just to get people in the store to buy the chicken. And then obviously you buy other shit. So the cart value goes up. It's like, I didn't know what deviled eggs were. I thought oh. that it was just like eggs with something in it, but I hate mayo to like I, anything that has mayo in it. I just can't eat it. So I was eating the egg, like the actual egg part of it. And then I was taking out the inside and everyone's like, why is there just a bowl of inside of the deviled eggs over here? And I'm like, cause it tastes funny. Like it doesn't taste right. So I just ate the egg and like, cause there's mayo in it. And I'm like, <gasps> Oh, don't even trust it at all. My body fucking knew. <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> so how do you make your tuna salad without uh, mayo? I literally do a raw salad with just a can of tuna on top of it. There's no tuna salad. That is my tuna salad. Okay. So you don't do like the, the relish, a little bit of mayo, blah, 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 stir it up. And I add my croutons and you know what my croutons, croutons are. Croutons. Yeah. Yeah. Cereal. Yeah. 
man oh I got blueberry bro i'm putting blueberry on it right now it's kicking yeah that would be good have you ever had dover salt the fish that sounds like a poisonous chemical i've never had dover salt but i keep hearing it's like an amazing fish and so we bought some yesterday Is that's that what a, i'm cooking for dinner that's not a common fish it can't be i've never seen it but i saw it you know me i'm a gordon ramsay whore i watch hell's kitchen and shit so Dover Sol was like one of their main menu items for a lot of the seasons. And I've never tried it, but Whole Foods had it. And so I bought some Dover Sol, which is what I'm going to make for dinner tonight with a wild mushroom risotto. But I don't know how to, I don't know how I'm going to cook it, dude. I've never had it. And it's a flat fish. So it, the fillets are long, but they're super thin. See, you got to be careful because I've eaten everything that comes out of the sea, but there's only yeah. one fish that has ever made me sick. And that was flounder. And I was like, why is... Why is it flounder that made me massively ill, like throwing up and stuff? It turns out because it's a bottom dweller, it has the most yeah. bad bacteria in it. That and, well, catfish is a river fish, but catfish bottom feeders, the meat tastes, they say it tastes muddy. And I, that's a horrible way to describe the taste of food. Oh, it tastes real muddy. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> You just That's gave me a good idea, though. It. I want um, I, I'm gonna have uh, what is it? Oh my god, I'm fr- blanking on the name. They're not shrimp. It's craw crawfish crawfish crawfish. You have you never had crawfish? No, I've had crawfish, but I'm gonna have okay. that. Okay, that's gonna be my Christmas tradition this year instead of shrimp. Because dude, seafood's getting expensive down here. It's getting ridiculous. I guess because it's out of the season for it. But yo, it was like eighty dollars for like a a little small jar of crab meat, and I was like, what the. F- like why is i can't make crab cakes like you make five crab cakes for 80 bucks that's ridiculous dude i will never pay that much for anything if it's expensive for you imagine how it is down here for seafood it's insane dude that's weird like because pal- like it all depends on where you're from like people from tennessee red meat down there is easy as shit but for me it's yeah. like really hard to get like it's cost a lot of money down here that's insane yeah our seafood is crazy expensive right now. until until about march our seafood will be super expensive we just have all those people that are out there fishing in the frozen snow tundra cutting holes and ice and shit like we're ready to do it it. i want to do it one of these days bro i'm gonna swing by and pick you up and we're gonna go ice fishing (laughs) i'm down to go let's go build i would honestly like to build a snowman with you if you ever want oh hell yeah i've never built one but because i'm in texas so we we build dust men (laughs) dude okay yeah so uh my uh but one of my childhood friends, um, we, uh, when it was, I can't believe I'm going to admit to this on here. <laughs> um, when, uh, it snowed really, really bad. He grabbed a snowball and he put it in his freezer. So okay. we're talking about in the middle of like August, he pulls out this fucking snowball. It's not a snowball anymore. It is an ice ball. Yeah. It's in a freezer. <laughs> this man scientifically during the months that it was traveling or taking its stroll through this lovely t- space refrigerator thing that ever you want to call it interdimensional travel from cold ass climate of december all the way into august he was pouring water on it okay so it would freeze so it was twice as icy it was like a straight literally ice ball he grabs it and i pissed him off and he chucked it at me i I wouldn't say it's my fault but it hit me but it's like a water balloon that didn't break one of those that hits you and you're like, fuck. And it just like, it, like get hit with a baseball and hit the ground. It didn't crack. So I grabbed it. And if his parents are listening right now, I'm the one that broke your window. <laughs> I chucked it. It went through their screen door on their porch and it hit the glass window, whatever in their door. So if they're listening and she's been on the podcast before his mom and his sister, <laughs> I'm just saying, I apologize, but it's 15 years later and you need to let it go. You're going to get a Venmo request for the price of the window. (laughs) It it hit me and I don't know why it didn't break, but it hit me. And I was like, like it stopped me in my tracks and it was like a water balloon. that didn't explode. It didn't hurt a whole lot. It was just like, he like overhand tossed it, like not fast, like a 90 mile an hour fastball or something. He just tossed it and it hit me. And I just like grabbed it and out of full pure anger, tossed it. And I don't have control on the thing. I didn't have like a spin or twist on it. Went right through the screen door and he like ducked down under his, like kind of like down below where you can't really see like the railing of the porch. And it went right into his door and cracked the glass, like broke through it a little bit. I was like, (gasps) no. So it became this question of we're not going to rat each other out. So it's just going to be an unknown mystery of how the door broke. 
until now. Look at us. We're just making breakthroughs here today. I don't expect her to listen. <laughs> no, this will be the one she listens to. <laughs> the fucking one she picked out of the 600 I've released already. Thanks. Yep. Yep. This will be the one. Just put the tag up uh, on the on the video. Who broke the window? And she's going to be like, that's the one. <laughs> it's like do, uh, when I went, uh, we used to, I think we spent like the week before Christmas, I went to a motocross track. I've talked about this before about um, we went to this motor uh, cross track. The first time I've ever been to one, it was my dad's friend and their kid, Dean, who was around my age. He would do professional motocross and stuff and win nice. championships. They would literally travel in a van all around all of the U.S. and go to these competitions. And I remember we we're like, you know, he's a little bit younger than me, but at the time I was probably like 13, but I was with my older brother. So it was like, we're about to do some crazy shit. So we're at this giant motocross track and people are just camping out all on the sidelines. So what we did was it was snowing out, you know, during the middle of the night, we started to ding dong ditch on people's campgrounds. Yes. They fucking saw our footprints, dude. We didn't even think we didn't even think my dad was like, yo. So I had a bunch of people just come up to me and tell me that you guys have been ding dong ditching. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, I've had four people say it to me now. So I know they're not making up stories. And I'm like, oh man, we're so sorry. We did. And we admitted to it. My dad's like, all right, well, don't do it again. And I'm like, won't do it again. Won't do it again. Not an hour later, another person comes up to my dad and goes, hey, your kid's ding dong ditching. And my parent, my dad just turns around and goes, I fucking told you not to do that. We're like, that was hours ago. They're still, it's the same people just following the footsteps at a slower pace. We're the wise men. They're following us. Yes. <laughs> I haven't done that in years. Here's the thing, you know, it's so it's cool to do it when you're a kid. Could you imagine like getting ding dong ditched and finding out who it is? And it's like a group of 40 year olds running around ding dong ditching. In a way, I wouldn't even be mad. I'd be like, do you do you? <laughs> it's wild hogs with <laughs> ding dong ditching where it's like, yeah, one last ride, <laughs> one last ride, one last neighborhood. Let's do it. <laughs> Maybe that I would that. say toilet paper in people's houses, but that shit's too expensive now with toilet yeah, paper. <laughs> that's like gold. There's people that are like on Halloween that were doing that. There's people that are picking out of their tree, like, I'm gonna save this for later. Yep, as long as it doesn't hit that that thorn, we're good. <laughs> now there is something because this episode is gonna it's not really a Christmas episode, but it's gonna come out before Christmas, obviously. Mm -hmm. But on the 21st, it's the first time that there's going to be two planets, I think Jupiter and Saturn, yeah, yeah. that are going to align in front of each other, and they're going to create an actual representation of what the North Star would look like, this giant shining light in the sky. It's going to be like if there's a full moon out and there's like a bright light. The yeah. funny thing is, is December 21st was the day in 2012 when they said the world was going to end. So maybe it's this year. Maybe it is this year. That's what I'm saying. The best way to end 2020 is everything goes to shit. You know... Or that it's actually going to be like a spaceship that shoots us and the world blows up. You know, that's what the bright light's going to be. So that's what People's Gate or People's Temple, that's what they were predicting. Uh-huh. When they drank that Kool-Aid. It's I'm drinking be, the eggnog. Don't drink the eggnog. the eggnog. I'm going to be standing out there when that bright light hits like this. Just come get me. <laughs> It's been a year. Come get me. <laughs> it's it's this has been the worst year. I will take anything to get off of this planet. That's why we yeah. gotta make the holidays. We gotta wrap it up on a good note, man. We got Christmas oh, for sure. and then we got New Year's and everyone I saw so many people shitting on New Year's Eve and I felt so hurt by it. Dude, I kind of it's like I don't get why people do vaca Christmas vacation and they go to like tropical climates. It's one fucking time of year, people. Just enjoy the cold climate, the trees, the lights, the eggnog. Enjoy it. Don't run away to fucking Florida or, you know, Cancun. Enjoy the holidays. Jesus, what's wrong with you? Embrace yourself for all the people that have been coming into the gym trying to work on those New Year resolutions. Dude, I'm hoping that it's not like that because last year was insane on in January. And I'm like, can't you all just figure out there's still happy hours and go break your diet like you did the last 10 years of your life? Fuck out of here. But this is going to be a different than the last year and the year before that and the year before that. I'm actually going oh, to yeah. stick with my goals. Uh, 2021's my year. Uh-huh. Remember when you said that in 2020 fucked you up the ass? Yeah. yeah. I said that 2020 was going to be my year to date and then coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And now we're just sitting here, you know, celebrating the holidays, bro. It's a good time. Oh, another Mariah Carey one for you. Old Lang Syne. Old Lang song? Syne? Yeah, it's the New Year's song. Just Google New Year's song Mariah Carey. It'll I got one. Your life. All right, I got a recommendation for you. 
Gotcha. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer by DMX. Oh, okay. I think Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. What, what? yeah, I'm going to listen to that immediately. As soon as I'm cooking my breakfast, you can see me over there working the pan. Just, yeah. I'm telling you, dude, I, when I, I, on Christmas day and usually the day before Christmas, I like to play Christmas songs, but like different versions, like Frank Sinatra stuff that yeah. makes it a little bit more different than the stuff you hear on the radio or in Walmart in October, where it's like, fuck, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. And we're playing Christmas songs. And they got Christmas decorations up for sale in September. You're like, the hell is going on? Yeah. There's always one person that celebrates Christmas all year round. And you're like, what are you doing? Like, I can't wait till Christmas, 275 days till Christmas, 274 days till Christmas. It's like, Jesus. Do you you know what my Facebook post is the day after Christmas? Can't wait till next Christmas. It's it's buddy, the elf. And it says only 365 more days until Christmas. But are you being serious about that? No, because I don't care about, whoa, let me not say that. I do care about Christmas, but I don't care about the actual day. I like this time of year because I'm a fat fuck and I like cold weather. Because the heat kills me. I freaking hate the cold. I'm always actually. So here's a funny experiment I've been doing at work. I'm like, why are my hands so cold? Like every time I would handshake someone like your hands are like ice. I'm like, yeah, mercury poisoning, probably from all the cans of tuna. But I was like, why does my palm feel different than my fingertips? And I noticed I put the temperature gun. I pressed it on my palm. So it was 70. I said, OK, that's kind of low temperature. Cold put it over to my finger 63 it's seven degrees colder on my fingertips than my palm have you been using that hand too much you know what i'm saying if maybe, anything maybe i've been using it too right. less that's why the blood's not there so here's your doctor's prescription <laughs> do it more <laughs> look so when i went to the dentist for the the tooth thing i'm getting done he looked at me and he goes like how do you get like this how does your mouth get like this i'm like i don't know years of neglect just biting into like those uh, walmart has those gumballs that have been in there for like eight years that are the size of fruit yeah. and it was like break teeth on those things he goes okay he goes i'm gonna hook you up to the thing get your blood pressure and everything get your heart rate hooks it up my heart rate was at like 49 or 49 and it would bounce up Jeez. to 50 it would go 49 50 49 50 but when i was at 50 i was like is that good They're like that's extremely fucking low and I'm like, yeah. yeah, like, I'm, I mean, I'm awake right now, but like, technically I, I'm basically half asleep and they're like, that, that's not how that works. And I'm like, so, okay. So is that good? Is that mean I'm an athlete? And they're like, fucking, I don't know what that is, man. It's a low heart rate. And I was like, okay. Then the yeah. machine starts beeping. It starts going beep, 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 beep. And I look over and it says heart rate low and it hits 49, then 48, then goes back up to 49, stops beeping at 50. I'm like, what is happening? Am I dying? Like, can I make Am it I do dying? that? Can I make it do that? And I started holding my breath and she's like, that's not how it works. So I have a naturally low heart rate. That's a good thing. So that means if you end up becoming an endurance runner, you're Gucci. I'm also at the same time, I don't ever really get scared from things. Like my cousin tries to like people try and pop out of corners and scare me. I'm just like naturally like, oh, you know, like I'm like, just, just, there's just no enthusiasm at all. Like just dead on the inside. You're like, got me. <laughs> it's like, I have either, I have, a, I have a really good reaction time, but when it comes to like jumping out and stuff, like it doesn't make my heart race. It doesn't, I get, I can get startled, I guess. Like if a gunshot goes off, but that's about oh, it. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, yeah, no, I think my heart rate's like 70 something. So a little higher, a lot higher. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to end up like, maybe that's why I'm cold on my hands. And there's like a degree difference is because my blood is barely pumping through my body. Uh, Got to get that uh, circulation up, man. How do I do that? Just like a lot of forearm workouts. Yeah. The, uh, the little scrunchy things, you know? The weird Just part walk is, around all day with them. <laughs> you ever get so cold it's hard to use your fingers? Oh, yeah. So sometimes I can tell when my fingertips are even colder than they naturally are because it's hard for me to go like this with my fingers, like be able to rotate them. Yeah. Whenever you do like cold water swimming and stuff like that, your hands will get to where you won't even be able to touch. It'll be like this and you're like, oh, I can't do it. I'm like the temperature of like a cold bath or an ice bath. Yes. I love ice baths. I don't at all. It makes me twice as cold. <laughs> so good for you though, man. So good. Sometimes Recovery. I'm just standing there and I'm like, I think I'm getting frostbite on my fingertips. So like, it's not even fucking cold. It's 70 degrees in here, but I'm like, my body doesn't know that. My body thinks it's like 30. My wife's like, there's no hot water left. And then I go to get in the shower and it's piping hot. I'm like, Jesus, what do you mean? She goes, it's not hot. And you're like, okay. 
That's what okay. I don't trust during like a snowstorm. Someone's like, oh, there's no uh, there's no hot water. So you have to take a cold shower. I'm like, all right, just don't take a shower. Like I'm not really in the I, what I have yep. to go to work. OK, I'll go to work without taking a shower because our water doesn't work. Or just go take a shower at the gym, bro. I know how you like that. <laughs> that is so <laughs> disgusting to me. If I had to pick up. A- <laughs> gift for christmas is that nobody showers anymore at the gym i'm tired every it's like a sneak when i go into the bathroom it's like nobody's in here i run in the bathroom and then all you hear is the water turn off and i'm like are you shitting me i've waited four hours i can't even go to the bathroom anymore without a naked old guy coming out have you seen the naked old guys like cheek spread like blow drying their asshole i've seen a man that's been a thing now at, at my gym i see it every time now i've seen a man drink a protein shake who's probably around my age sitting on a bench while a man old man was toweling off with his ass right in the man's face just naturally drinking a protein shake acting like it wasn't there and i'm like you can't yeah i it's this isn't just me this is weird this is not like this is why i say being in lockdown for too long people get don't they just get weird they don't know how to act anymore they can't drive anymore either holy oh. shit I almost, I think the other day there was a yard sale going on and these people just walked right across the street as I was driving and I had slam on my brakes. I'm like, you didn't even look like you were just, Oh, fucking half off of a microwave. That has a crack in it. And they were walking yep. over to it. I'm like, Shh. yeah, can't. I mean, I might do it for the microwave because you know, microwaves take the best selfies. Have you seen that? Oh, bro. Go, go stand in front of a microwave. <laughs> It take a picture. It adds like 10 pounds of muscle, bro. I'm telling you. It's like when someone's like, you can charge your phone in the microwave. All right, go ahead and try it. Go ahead and try mm, it. No, nope, I'm not falling for that one. No, if you just look in the in the microwave reflection, it adds more muscle. So what I'm going to do, because I always send my wife those stupid photos. I'm like, yeah, look at the microwave. I'm going to take one in a Christmas ornament reflection and be like, happy holidays. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Here I am. I love it how this has been the best advice podcast we have done. <laughs> you know, we're just here changing lives, bro. Just changing lives. Tis the season and the season for a reason, my friend. You know, it's like I'm I'm Brodolph, the red nosed gains deer. Why would you use bro science on my show? Don't ever bring that man in here. Hey man, sixty percent of the time it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, dude, I appreciate you for coming back out and doing the podcast, man. Is there anything for you, sure. anything you want to promote to the page? Um, man, I was trying to make my own sauce, but it uh proven to be a hell of a process. So it's gonna be a few months. <laughs> did but... it get, did it congealate or whatever that word is when it sits too long? No, it it's just separated. It wouldn't it wouldn't bind. So I'm trying to work some science some bro science to get it to bind and um no so yeah i'll be posting videos on the on the site and trying to you know keep going with that but other than that i'm just enjoying the holidays bro you know hitting hitting the stores for the madness and going to the gym and rocking christmas sweaters that's what i do eat drink and eggnog I don't, I don't like the ending where you said drink eggnog, but I can tell people that if you want to have a happy Christmas, you make it what you make it. And at the same time, stay away from mayo because that's a food you should never let into your heart. I agree. That's a good way to end it, bro, because mayo is not good for you. It's and not. it's also not tasty. It's just lard. I've got plenty of that on my own. 